The last three questions from section 3.4 ask us to graph polynomial functions. Factor first if the expression is not in factored form. Question number eight is f of x equals x to the third plus 11x squared plus 20x minus 32. This is not in factored form. So recall in the previous section where we were factoring polynomials. You want to list all the possible rational zeros, and I looked at all the possible factors of 32 divided by all the factors of the leading coefficient of 1, and these are all your possibilities. Positive 1 could be 0, negative 1, plus or minus 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32. You can use synthetic division and find one that does end up with a remainder of 0. So if we start the synthetic division using the coefficients. There are no missing exponents, so we can set it up in this way. And even though we have a list here of actually 12 different possibilities, since this is a third degree polynomial, the most that we could have are three zeros of the polynomial function. We have um, 12 different ones to choose from, so we may not get it on the first shot. So what I do is I start off with a positive one, and I work through the synthetic division. If I get a remainder of zero, I know that I found a factor and then I can reduce this and continue factoring. So bring down the first term, you multiply, multiply and add, and it looks like this time, the very first time, we do get a remainder of zero. So the, this problem can be written as the polynomial function can, since 1 is a 0 the polynomial, x minus 1 is a factor. The other factor is what's listed down here. Uh, since this was an x to the third, this is going to be x to the second. This is x, so we can write it as x squared plus 12x plus 32. Now this one you can continue to factor, x minus 1, and the factors of x squared plus 12x plus 32. It's going to be uh, the factors of 32 that will add up to positive 12. If you want to list the factors, 1 times 32, 2 times 16, um, 4 times 8. The 4 and 8, when you multiply them, give you 32. When you add them, give you the middle term of 12. So the other factors are x plus 4 and x plus 8. Using the um, those factors, you can set each of those factors equal to zero to find the x-intercepts. So, if you set Okay, so to, what we're doing here is listing the x-intercepts of the graph by setting each of those factors equal to zero. If we set x minus one equal to zero, you get x equals 1 is an x-intercept. Set x plus 4 equal to 0. x equals negative 4 is an x-intercept. Set x plus 8 equal to 0. Then x equals negative 8 is an x-intercept. Those are three points on the graph where the graph crosses through the x-axis. At positive 1, at negative 4, and at negative 8. The graph crosses through those three points. Now if you remember in the previous couple of problems, you can determine if the graph is going to end high or low. So since this leading coefficient, leading term, uh, is x to the third, that means it's a positive leading term, so we know it's going to end up high. And it's an odd, so it's going to do the opposite. We want to know what happens in between. And we can choose a couple points and make a table to find some other values. For example, uh, let's see, when x is equal to a number between these two zeros, negative 8 and negative 4, we can try negative 6. And choose a number between negative 4 and positive 1, say, like... Oh, even zero would work. Plug in those into the original polynomial function and get the value for f of x. And that could help us determine approximately how high or low the graph is going to go in between those x-intercepts.
If you plug negative 6 into the original function, you get a 28 out. If you plug 0 into the polynomial function, you get negative 32. So um, approximately negative 6 is going to be up the graph. Now we can adjust the scale later, but it's going to be above the graph. Uh, above the x-axis, and then over here you got negative 32, it's going to go down. So it's going to look approximately something like that. How high and low go will actually depend on graphing of more points to get a better looking. But we get the general idea that this graph starts low, goes up, crosses through the x-axis at negative 8, comes back down, crosses through the x-axis at negative 4, goes below the x-axis, comes back up, and crosses through the x-axis at positive 1 and heads towards positive infinity. So it looks like on my graph, we can check here, it appears that this could go through negative 4, negative 8, and 1. I'm just going to double check. Yeah, that, that does look like the best choice here. And check your answer. Excellent. So the way I graph this was by determining uh, the rational zeros, finding one that gives you a remainder of zero, and then factoring the rest. Once you get those three factors, set them equal to zero to find the three places on the x-axis where the graph crosses through. Those are our x-intercepts. Then I just plot a couple more points and determine uh, the general behavior of the graph, and we can choose out of all those which one is the best choice. Question number nine is graph the function, but it's already in factored form, so that really makes it easier. We don't have to go through that process of finding um, all the factors. So we can begin by graphing the x-intercepts. This has three factors. We can set each of those factors equal to zero. If 2x equals 0, divide by 2 to get x equals 0, that's um, an x-intercept. Set x minus 3 equal to 0, and you get x equals 3 is an x-intercept. Set x plus 2 equal to 0, and you get x equals negative 2 as an x-intercept. We can begin having an idea of what the graph looks like by plotting those on a graph. The graph is going to cross through the x-axis at x equals 0, at negative 2, and at positive 3. At 0, negative 2, and positive 3. Now what it does in between, we'll have to plot a few points to, to decide. We can make a table of values. And I like to choose a point in between each of those x-intercepts and outside of the x-intercepts. So this is just kind of a, uh, just a partial listing of some points that can be plotted. If I plug in negative 3, I want to figure out the y value. Plug in negative 2, I know I'm going to get an x-intercept 0. I'm going to choose negative 1. I'll choose a positive 1 for x, and then I'll choose a positive 4. That, that's going to give me a good start as to the basic shape of the graph. It's going to cross through those three, but it can do lots of different things. It could go down, up, and down, and go up, down, and up. It can go kind of maybe even bounce on the graph. And one way to determine the behavior is by um, completing this table of values. So you can plug in negative 3 into the original polynomial function and get the y values out. What I'd like to show you is how you can use a table on the graphing calculator. Again, not necessary, but it, it's just if you have one, this is how you would set up a table. Okay, turn on your calculator and hit the y equals button. You want to enter the function that's given. The original function was 2x, and in parentheses, x minus 3 in parentheses x plus 2. And I want to look at the table of values so that I can plot this graph. 
out right here above the graph button is the is the word table. So I'm going to press second and table so that you can see that here we have x values listed and the y values. In this case, I've got x equals 0 all the way up to 6. And if I use the arrow up, I can look at some other values for x. So you can see these y values get really large negative values as um, x is negative for those larger negative values. And then you can scroll down using the arrow up and down. You can see these x values get to be really large. Now, sometimes a table's not set up this way. So right above the window button, it's a TBL set. If you press second TBL set, this is going to give you a way you can start and um, uh, set up your table so that you can get um, the values that I see on my screen. The table start is typically zero, and then the this little triangle table, that means the the uh, values between each of the x's is 1. That's generally a good setup and to make sure both of those are on auto, auto. If those are different, then your, your table's going to be um, just maybe not as clear to read. So this is generally a good idea to start off your table at 0 with a table change of 1 with both of those autos. Now I'm going to go back to table, second table, and you can see here all those different x values. So if you plug in negative 3 into the original function, even with a scientific calculator, you would get that the, the uh, y value is negative 36. If you plug in negative 2, you see the y value is 0. That point is already plotted. It's one of our x-intercepts. When x is equal to negative 1, you get you get uh, positive 8. Oops, sorry about that. And continue to scroll down. When x is 0, y is 0, that's another x-intercept. Anytime you see the zeros on the y's, do you know you have a, uh, an x-intercept? When x is equal to 1, you get negative 12. And then continue to scroll down on the table to see when x is equal to 4, you get a positive 48. This can also be done with a basic scientific calculator. Just plug in those values for x and get the corresponding y values. Okay, so um, we can. I'm going to make uh, the y-axis scale go by tens. So that would be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and then go by tens this way too. So you can see those y values get to be pretty large. So we, we're going to plot negative 3, negative 36. Go negative 3, negative 36. That's one of your points. Switch to red here. Uh, negative 2, 0 is a point we already have. Negative 1, positive 8 is a point. 1, negative 12 and 448. So now you should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 points on your graph. You can connect those points with a line, smooth curve, sorry, it goes, it's going to go up, it's going to go down, and then it's going to go up again. So that's a pretty decent looking graph just using the 3x intercepts and 4 additional points. Out of all the choices, it does appear that choice B looks most like the graph that we have. We're going to choose B and check our answer.